three months. This is how long I had this nail on. And this is probably one of the most extreme feel overdues I've ever had. This is bad, so please do not try this at home. In this video, we are going to finally fix it and I will try new Korean-inspired nail art using this. Coming up! Hello guys, this is Anastasia. This is what my nail looks like now and this is what it used to look like in December 2021. Yes, this is how long ago we made these nail extensions and three months later I still have this nail on and it is time to take it off. So I am going to use a carbide bit, the speed is 25,000 rotations per minute. My friend Marina, she also has a YouTube channel, did these extensions for me for uh, Christmas, like back in December 2021. By the way, this set was gorgeous. And then later, I believe like a month later or something, we were doing extensions for each other again. And she said, let's do a new extensions on you. And I said, okay, but please let's keep this thumb because there's one product, one nail hack I really want to try. So I just need one extra nail. So this is why we left it like it was and never did a new extensions on it. Then I was busy recording classes, doing different kind of shows, and later another circumstances occurred, I had to leave, so I just never had time to try this product and the hack that I intended to, and the nail was continuing growing out, so now it's been three months, as you can see, and the product is still on. Finally, I had time to just sit down and do new extensions. By the way, this is not the hack that I originally wanted to try, but this is another one I also wanted to do for a long time, and finally we have this chance. If you watched my previous videos, you know that I strongly do not recommend to have your extensions for longer than one month, because this is actually bad for your nails. One of the reasons my thumb is still in a good condition is because I filed off the free edge. As you can see, I didn't keep the original length. I think if I did, my nails will definitely not survive these three months and it will look much worse. Another reason is because I have a rather long nail bed on this nail, so this is also what helped me to keep it for so long. But in any way, three months is definitely too long to have your nail extensions. One of the questions I receive from my clients and followers sometimes is if someone did nail extensions and then for some reason they cannot afford doing fills or just do not have this opportunity. So this is what I recommend to do first. You need to carefully file off the free edge, make them as short as possible. And if there is no lifting, no problems that you can naturally grow them out. This is what my nails look like now and let's do new extensions and start with the prep. First, I'm going to push back the cuticles using orange wood stick. I don't know if you noticed by now, but I'm working with my non-dominant hand, so this is not the most comfortable thing to do, especially when it comes to prep and filing. So sometimes you just want to help with your dominant hand, as you can see it's like wants to move on the file instead of filing with the opposite hand, but this is just one nail, so I think we can do it. I will be doing extensions using traditional forms, so I'm filing the free edge as short as possible and then I proceed to dry manicure. This is diamond flame bead, the speed is 16,000 rotations per minute. I start with forward mode and you can use the same bead to clean the side walls and then I proceed to the opposite side and switch to reverse mode. I wanted to try this mermaid tail nail art hack for quite a while. It was saved in my to-do list for more than a year, I believe, and I even bought uh, the products that I need to do it. But you know, sometimes you have this idea and never have time to make it come to life. And finally, we are going to try it now. So then I take off the surface shine. I need to take it almost from the entire nail, because as you remember, it 
grew out pretty long so that's what we need to do and try to do it in one direction from the cuticle towards the free edge prep is finished and for this nail art i'm going to need a hair scrunchie this one does look like a mermaid's tail so then we need to cut it in half and simply cut the small piece that we are going to encapsulate inside the nail you can stretch it only in one direction so it's not stretching like this but if you try it diagonally then it stretches pretty well so we are going to place it in a certain way i apply dehydrator and then non-acid primer for any kind of encapsulating designs glass nails i think the best product is hard gel because it has this beautiful clear transparency and also this is quite easy to use I am applying a base coat. I'm using the Cupa base coat, super thin coat, not touching the skin, and cure in LED for 30 seconds. I'm going to do my favorite shape, which is almond, and we'll use traditional forms. So first we fit the form and do the application. This part is always challenging because you can hardly see what's going on and if you guys cannot see the product that I am applying on the form, do not worry, I cannot see it either. So you're kind of guiding yourself through the reflection of the light and this is how you can approximately can tell where the product is. Now we only need to build the free edge and since the scrunchie is transparent, my goal is to hide my nail, so I decided to use these decorations, I believe this is called mica, and the colors of the scrunchie are mostly white, green, and light blue, and I'm going to use the same colors. I will apply them mostly right here, because I would like to hide the outgrown free edge as the nail will start to grow longer. And this one is super easy to use, because this is very flat, and I will use some of the green and some of the blue colors. I do not have a huge variety of the brushes anymore, so I'm using the same gel brush. First I dip it in the clear gel and then I apply it on the nail. Since we already have a sticky layer on top of the nail, this is how it is going to adhere to it. Or you can also apply a thin coat of clear and apply it on top. This is how it is going to be secured even better. Then I apply another layer on top because I just want to have a smooth surface and also to make sure that this mica is not going to move back and forth when we are going to add the scrunchie on top. After curing, I apply another layer of the gel because we need something underneath to secure it and I apply it slightly more than usual because we need a little bit to make it go through the fabric and then I realized that the piece that I cut is not perfect but I think it's okay because we can always fix it later and then we cure it in LED. At this point this lamp like stamper and LED lamp would be perfect but since I didn't have it I just used my own hands to secure it. Then I take off the form and cut the remaining pieces, the ones that we don't need but I also think that we are going to file the rest of it as I will be doing shaping. Looks pretty good now, but the point of this design is to encapsulate it because when you apply clear gel on top, it is going to work like a lens. So all the colors, especially the pearl ones, the ones that have some kind of shine in it, are going to look even better. So I apply a thin coat first, like a slippery coat, and then I'm going to apply it with a floating technique. Since this is going to be a transparent design, try to not put any bubbles inside, so it will be like a glass, super clear, transparent and beautiful. I'm using the gel by the bottle, it has medium thin consistency and I think this is like the perfect consistency for this kind of designs. Then I freeze cure it for 10 seconds, then I pinch it and continue the application, because we do not have enough product on the top, we need more to build the apex. Ooh, 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 
Then we cure it for one minute, but honestly, I had to cure it for two because I have a very small lamp with me, so I just wasn't sure that it is going to fully cure, but it did. Then we take off the sticky layer and need to file and shape the nail. When you encapsulate something inside of the nail, make sure that it is not conflicting with their shape and the structure of the nail, which means when there's something near the cuticle, it needs to be thin, so we will be able to apply the product super thin and the same it with the sidewalls. That's why sometimes it's a struggle because you want this product inside to show up, but also you do not want to accidentally file it off. Then I buff the surface to make it all smooth. And for this design, we definitely need a glossy top coat. And I can already tell that it is going to look great. At this point, I regret that I did only one nail. I think I need to do a full set, maybe with the different colors next time. It looks beautiful. What do you think, guys? Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time here on my channel, consider subscribing as I post new nail art tutorials and product reviews just like this one every week. See you in my next one. Goodbye.